Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio. Get ready. It's time to rise. Happens, right? In life, we it's very easy to get caught in ruts because yeah. it's busy. We get kids, we have responsibilities. And then once one you one time you, you look around and one year turned into three years, five years, ten years, and you're like, where did all this time go? Yeah. So you know, I, I, I urge people to not allow that to happen to them because mm-hmm. it so easily happens. It happens to me too, unless I am very cognizant. And so like, you know, you have to take that agency within you. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is stop overthinking because we get, we are, our, we are our worst nightmares and our worst enemies. It's we stop ourselves from starting because we overthink all the things that are wrong with us, as opposed to just being like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to overthink that. I'm just going to start. I'm going to do. I'm going to go into action and take one little step. And then lo and behold, that one step turns into two steps, three steps. And then guess what? You've now walked, you know, a half a mile, right? Or whatever it is. Yeah. But we get so scared and so feared of failure that we don't even want to even make that step. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so that's the, that's the part that you we were, you were saying about the good enough when really, it's really a question of just like going after it and starting by, by just doing that one attempt. It's so, it's so true. One of the things I love too, that you talk about is that, you know, we could be too smart for our own good. And it really yeah. correlates with what you just said about like the overthinking, but you know, usually when we think about someone who's really smart, it's 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 something that we see as very advantageous, right? But I do agree with you so deeply that actually being really smart can fire up the brain in a way where you're just like you're just you're you're in um like freeze mode, right? You're just overthinking. I, I actually think being too, being really smart is a detriment a lot of times because it does. It, it it does stop you in the start. It makes you overthink. It makes you a- overanalyze. It you become a, you, you can have analysis paralysis because you're thinking of all the things that can go wrong. Yeah. But when you're bold, you can you think about all the things that can go right and you act. Now you can be sometimes impulsive when you're bold, but if you can measure that, mm-hmm. the secret sauce, in my opinion, for success is being bold versus being brilliant. I mean, the world does favor the bold, not the brilliant. They say that. Um, whoever those they are, yeah. because it's you know because it's true. I mean, the reality is, if I really look back and think about all the people that have really achieved enormous success, it's because they've been bold. Yeah. They just they started, they acted, and they then they figured it out as they went. Versus having all the spreadsheets and the data and all the analytics and all the all the different stuff. Like, please, I mean. That will just bog you down. I mean, I'm not, I'm like average smart, if that. And I've done okay. You know what I mean? Because the what, because, right? Because I went, I like just, I just started, I just tried. Mm-hmm. And the, really, the difference a lot between someone who wins and loses is someone who actually just stays the path mm-hmm. and just is like persistent and just doesn't give up. Right? Yes, I mean, girl. Right? Like yes. losing doesn't make you a loser, but quitting makes you a quitter. It's and, so true. Right? And so I live by that motto, you know, like I'm not a quitter and I'm not a, a loser only because I just kept on going. And that is like, to me, my kind of framework, like you are so on your team and I love that. And I'm not saying you can't have moments where maybe you're being hard on yourself or, you know, any of that energy. A but, lot of that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, how do you, let me ask you when you, cause look, I think we can both agree. I would like you to affirm this actually, that um, being bold or having strong, bold skill levels does not make you immune to fear, like feeling fear. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course not. I've got fear all the time. I've got fear right now. <laughs> but, but tell me about that because again, you know, to, to, to really help people who are like, but I, I, how do I get out of the fear part of this? Because, okay, this sounds great, but what the fuck? Like, I don't know how to move past the fear and everybody's fear is going to be different, but I would just love to hear how some of your tactics. 
I mean, first of all, I'm fearful all the time, but I don't let it stop me. That's the difference. I mean, I don't love public speaking. You know, a lot of the times when people are in the space that we're in, it requires a lot of like talking and public speaking and more public speaking. And I don't like it. It makes me very uncomfortable. I'm very insecure about it. I, I know what I know and I like, and I, and I have my ideas and my philosophies, but I'm not, I don't claim to be the biggest expert on anything. I'm just telling people what, what works for me and what I've seen work for a lot of other people in, 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 in kind of like from like, from like, from up, from looking down and from my own experiences. But because in this business, like I said, you have to do a lot of this stuff. I like, I don't like it, but I, instead of kind of like avoiding it, I go through it because I can't avoid it. So you know, being being fearful is okay. You could be scared. Scared is normal. Yeah. I think the people who say they're not scared, there's something probably like not right because I think it's human nature to have that. But it's about it's about what how you're gonna how and what you're gonna do to deal with it. You can choose to to sit in a ball and cower about it, or you can choose to take ownership and agency of yourself and be like, okay, I don't like this. I'm super scared about it. I have a lot of insecurity, but I'm going to just do it anyway. And guess what happens? You do it anyway, and the thoughts in your head of what could happen are way worse than what really happened. Yeah. Nothing is ever as bad as you think it's going to be. That is the first thing. And the more you do something, because I've been having to do a lot of public speaking, especially now with promoting the book and doing all these things, that now, like, you know, the it's uncomfortable at the beginning, but then you get more comfortable and it gets easier and it gets better because you're doing it so much more. And part of my my whole process and what I talk a lot about in the book is like how to get comfortable with that feeling, how to get comfortable with failure, how to get comfortable with asking for what with what you want, how to get into a place where you have the courage to do tomorrow what you don't feel comfortable doing today. And this is not rocket science, but it's very simple. And a lot of it has to do with practice. You've got to practice and you've got to do it over and over and over again to get over that fear. And that's how you build resilience. And that's how you build character. When you do things you don't want to do, but you do it anyway. Fuck you, <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's my God, I you are firing me up. My heart is... Because I so stand with you in everything you're saying. And it's so, it's so crazy. Your TED talk was that like three years ago? Three, three years Two ago? Two and a half. I think Two now half. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so fucking good. And I remember when I first took that talk and I was like, when you're talking like presented the boldness, I'm like, oh my God, she nailed it. Exactly. And it's so, again, this is something I really genuinely love about you is like, listen, you are a very accomplished woman. Again, very prolific. You've done incredible things. Your career capital is so rich and you still, you know, you're charging forward. There's so much more coming from you, but it's, it's so amazing to witness your most authentic self express. Like, listen, um, here's the deal. By the way, Ted talk, like over four, 4.3 million views, I believe. No, it's actually at, I think it's at 5 million now. Is it? Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, Something yeah. Crazy. Okay. I don't know. Something it's so good. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and you're over here and you're like, and by the way, podcast, fucking crushing. And you're like, by the way, I, I'm not comfortable. I don't really like public speaking, which I understand. I understand you so deeply. Um, but you still do it. And, and, and here's the thing, you don't just do it, but you, this is the thing that's so important is that you show up with everything you got. Like whatever that fucking is in the moment, like you're giving it all. And I think that that's also a skill, you know, that you just practice. And so what I think is so valuable for everybody listening or watching right now is, is that, you know, so many people could be making excuses about why it's not possible for them. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I mean, you literally called yourself a fucking professional failure, which is like the biggest. Like, yeah, I am a professional failure. I say all the time that I got a uh, a master's at falling and failing, but I got a PhD in, you know, getting myself back up and trying again. And that's basically what it is. 
It's That's incredible. It but you, but at the same time, and I'm, I'm saying it for you, and I bet like you are so well established, successful on many different levels. I mean, your family life, like it's not just you as an entrepreneur. It's, you know, and again, I go way back. So I, I can literally, I know the personality, like I, the through line, like it's, it's still, you, you are you, you are you, everybody. And people who know me know that I am fucking me. So I'm saying this to you. And I, I think, again, the most valuable piece here is that you're really giving everyone permission. It's an invitation. Like, listen, you can make excuses, but I'm here to tell you that most of what you think or you see as a limitation is actually just an excuse. Compassion, yeah. but it's an excuse. So, yeah. I, I believe, listen, I'm not one of these people, right? Um, I don't, I, I, it, you know... On social media, a lot of people who throw a lot of molasses on you, you know what I mean? Like, like you are enough and you're great and you're wonderful and all these other things, which is good and true. However, that's not my way. And that's not my, I don't believe that we grow when that is the way we think. My, my thing is, I always want to see how much further I can really grow and push myself to get to, to really self-actualize, right? Because if you see yourself as good enough all the time and I don't need to change, then where's the growth in that? Mm -hmm. And that's not my style, right? Like to me, that's just, it doesn't, that's not what how I feel. I feel like, you know, we are, we have to be our own CEO of our, of our life. And we have to take that ownership and we have the ability to become what we want and also become and or, or do nothing with it, right? It, the, the onus is on you, right? And I think that there's something to be said for work ethic and working hard, right? That you need to, nothing ever comes easy, right? Like I'm not saying even with this, like, oh, uh, if you want to be bold or if you want to get that, whatever that goal is, you know, just do this. No, the truth of the matter is a lot of times it doesn't work out. A lot of times you don't reach that goal for lots of reasons. There's a lot of variables to why people succeed beyond, right? Yeah. But what I will say and what I do promise you and what I promise people all the time, that if I promise you, if you go down the path of action and practice and working hard and picking, you know, a direction, not necessarily a destination, but a direction mm -hmm. and you stay in motion, you will may not find, you may not get to that, that goal necessarily, but another opportunity will present itself that you never knew existed. And that's the point that you sitting on your couch watching Netflix, guess what's going to happen? No opportunity. You're not going to find an opportunity over there. But where you will find opportunity is if you are open to opportunities, you say yes when you want to say no, mm -hmm. and you go out there and and try to do things. You may fail and it may not work out, but people's and my best successes always came from those failures, even though at the moment, I didn't know that that was going to happen. Like at that moment, you feel like, oh yeah, you feel like it's a failure. But if you can reframe how you see things in your head and be like, you know what, like this was a fail. I failed at this right now, but if maybe that just wasn't my, that wasn't, that wasn't my path, but if I brush myself off and get right back up and keep going, guess what? Another opportunity will happen. Yeah. You know, so you, it, you have to kind of not let little things or failures stop you from keep on, from achieving what your really, your, your real path was supposed to be. I've been journaling my entire life and it's helped me to develop the most empowered, loving, and trusted relationship with myself. Journaling is a powerful tool that helps you to gain more self-love and self-confidence. It can help you get unstuck when you need clarity the most. And it helps you to powerfully move through any and all of your life challenges. It's a pathway to manifesting your biggest desires in life while creating an unbreakable relationship with your authentic self. I created You Are The Path, a guided and illustrated journal to help you gain all of this in your own life. In this seven by 10 mystical journal, you get a personal introduction and final thoughts message from me, seven guided and illustrated sections with line pages and five thought provoking journal prompts, seven empowering quotes from me. You get one freestyle creative section full of blank pages for drawing and sketching 
and you get the beautiful artwork designed by a talented artist, Emerald Paget. There are 120 pages of pure possibilities waiting for you in this journal. You Are the Path was born to help you create, discover, and illuminate the path that is you. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look, R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And on that note, you guys, I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next.